What's up guys? I'm Tuliani with The Willing Road. I'm here with our awesome planet for Nat Geo Travel and we are going to the Galapagos today. What am I excited about for the Galapagos? Obviously all the animals and the fact that you can go up to the animals. I just feel like a place like that doesn't exist where you just go up to animals and you can just be so close to them and they're not scared of us. That seems unreal to me. All right, so we just made it to San Cristobal Island. Before we get onto our boat though, we're just walking around the waterfront and the first thing we see are sea lions. Oh, they're just sunbathing. That's what you do. Look at the baby. Oh my god, there's iguanas. <laughs> what? I've never been this close to an iguana before. Oh, they don't care. How cool. We're getting on the Zodiac, so the Zodiac will take us to our cruise ship. So we made it onto the ship, onto the National Geographic Endeavor 2. And we finally got to our room. It's actually really nice. And we've got a really nice bathroom. And this is our home for the next eight days. Okay, we're gonna go eat some food right now before we embark on another journey onto the islands. But first, food. Lunch time. That's the most important thing right now, is food. Now, as a photographer, for about 11 years or so. I've shot a lot of wildlife, a lot of landscapes, people, and I've shot with some National Geographic photographers. When I saw that Jay Dickman, a National Geographic photographer, was on this trip, uh, that was a real draw for me, and uh, I was really glad to get on this week. It's gonna be a pretty photo-intensive tour I think a lot of early mornings to get the morning light. I'm really excited to see the Galapagos, see all the wildlife there, and hopefully, you know, just enjoy the time there. meal here on the National Geographic Endeavor 2 and we've got a buffet style tonight so we've got some roasted pork a little bit of sea bass some salad and artichoke hearts and I'm really excited because I'm really hungry so let's dig in tonight we head to Española Island where we begin our first full day of adventure. We're going to go snorkeling, but first we have to go to a little meeting, and then afterwards they're going to suit us up for all the snorkeling gear, and it's gonna be super fun, we're gonna see lots of fish. We are gonna go deep water snorkeling so that we can see more, which is a little more experienced, or not that experienced, we just know how to swim. So, it's gonna be a fun day. Very busy day today though. the beach right now of Española after snorkeling out in the deep blue but we're here in the beach with lots of sea lions and they really don't care about us hanging out with them which is pretty cool we've also got mockingbirds which are properly named because they really are mocking us it's really cool to see the sea lions hanging out sunbathing and just playing around we're gonna go eat some lunch buffet style hand sanitizer so you don't get sick first we start with our soups and today, it's potato soup. Nice, creamy, and thick. Super excited. 
We got some lentils. Oh, this is fish cooked in tomato sauce. I'm all about the fish out here because we're right there in the ocean. So yeah, fish, 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 fish. And over here we've got the chef. What is he making? Roasted lamb. Look at that, yes. Get some sauce on there. Maybe I'll just get one slice of lamb. Mmm. Oh, the sauce is good. Adds a nice little flavor to the fish. Mm hmm. That's really nice. Let's see this lamb. Ooh. Oopsie. Making a mess. Gotta get some of that chimichurri sauce in it. Mm. Definitely have to put the chimichurri on it. Or some good chimichurri. We're gonna go for a photography workshop now and uh, see what we can learn from the National Geographic photographers. I love doing Where's Waldo photographs. That you put up a beautiful picture, lovely background, and all that, and your audience, and you've got them. And then they get to part two of the photograph. You got them further. I'll mention it tonight, so act interested when I say it tonight, but <laughs> it's been proven that your audience is going to give your photograph less than a half second of attention. And often, don't always just shoot a tight photograph of the bird. Bring in the environment. You can tell by this picture it's probably not Kansas. Camera set for night. And I, I, don't know how to do it on, I don't know how to do it on this kind of thing. So it's going to be in your menu. Um, so the second one. It's uh, that little wheel right there. Right now we're on a little photo expedition on the island of Española. And we are going to take a three hour hike through the island, taking a look at all the different iguanas and the albatross and some sea lions and take some really nice photos with some National Geographic photographers. Today, we wake up at Floriana Island, which has a strange history of mysterious human disappearances and murders. So we're on Floriana Island right now, and we are going to walk inland. We're going to see some blue-footed boobies, as well as some pink flamingos uh, further in near a lagoon. After that, we're going to head out to uh, another beachy area where we're going to see the post office. That's on a different area. But for right now, let's just hike through and go see the blue-footed booby nesting. One of the places that Darwin actually visited, uh, right here. And we know that for the collections that he made that are quite unique to this part of the island, to this specific part of the island. We woke up super early, but we were able to see these flamingos over here in the lagoon. And it's like one big family, it's super cool. Um, they're just eating right now, not doing much. A couple of them flew around, but it's cool to see them. Um, there's only 400 of them here on the Galapagos Islands. They're Galapagos flamingos only. They're not. They're similar to North American uh, flamingos, but they're, these ones are specific to the Galapagos. Got stung by a wasp. Not allergic, but you know, I'm just gonna get checked out anyway by the doctor. He's the he's like, saying um, wasp. Okay. Deep. Okay. A wasp. I feel like a little sting every once in a while. Okay. That's it. Let's see. So now we're gonna go to Champion Island. We're gonna drift along the island looking for any sea animals we can find and snorkeling. It's gonna be it's a little rough out there, but I'm sure we'll be fine. The water is just, you know, crashing against the island. No worries. Not worried about it at all.
go kayaking along the bay and then after we're done kayaking we're gonna go onto a beach landing where we will take a short hike to a uh, post office which is right behind the beach and it's been around for quite a long time. beach. We've got a little bit of rough water as you can see the waves right now. But we're going to go to the post office and drop off our little postcard. Uh, this postcard. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully someone picks it up. But I'm going to try to take a, a postcard see uh, if there's one near my area that I can drop off. So that's exciting. So let's go! Welcome to Post Office Bay. This is a very historical site of the Galapagos. Uh, of course, there wasn't a barrel here when this started. Uh, there are records of this since uh, 1812, although some whalers uh, from uh, uh, England, from London actually, they came to survey this area uh, for whaling activities back in 1792. And it's believed that that's the time when this started, although there are no records of the actual box that was seen for the first time in 1812 by uh, Captain David Porter. And many of you are traveling to very remote parts of the earth so today you are going to have a mission right mm -hmm. so you're going to be part of this tradition so you find a letter uh, a postcard now we're going to read the addresses you're in a different city you're in a different state and say well you know i may be able to go there but i don't, i'm not sure so i'm going to drop it in the mailbox don't do that right so the the reason why we're here is that you can hand deliver this so somebody will do the same with your postcard new york new york Nope. <laughs> Nevada, Carson City. Oh, we can deliver that. Hey. All right, come forth, come forth. I'm gonna go get some food because I'm hungry. Ooh, okay, so we've got, I got the tuna and it looks so pretty i don't know if you've seen it already but not a knife and i just took a bite and it's really good <laughs> but it's so pretty i almost don't want to eat it even though i just ate it <laughs> but yes it is time to eat dinner look at that little crunchy piece of salmon skin or tuna skin fish skin anyway <laughs> let's eat <laughs> mm. oh it's nice got dessert now it's a um, ecuadorian lime pie with merengue right here on top which looks pretty good Got some little raspberry sauce right here on the bottom. I think raspberry. Or is it strawberry? Oh, uh, strawberry. Okay. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh my god. That is super, super sweet. Now we move to our next destination of Puerto Ayora on Isla Santa Cruz, home of 18,000 inhabitants and the giant tortoise. that are there. We're gonna put our vests on and uh, yeah see how they live. Go to. We're gonna go visit a school and we're gonna go see some tortoises so I'm pretty excited about that. So let's go. We're getting onto our bus right now and we're gonna take the bus a short ride to our next location which is gonna be the Charles Darwin Research Center. So we just made it to the Charles Darwin Research Center 
Um, we're going to go in there and we're going to learn about uh, the conservation of tortoises. And we're going to see really big tortoises. We're going to see the saddleback tortoises. We're going to see the Florianas. We're going to see uh, the taxidermy of Lonesome George. And what else are we going to see? We got the little babies we're going to go see, which I'm super excited about because they're so cute. But then I'm also really cool, excited to see the really big ones. So let's go inside and see what, what there is. We're gonna see our first tortoise right now. I'm not calling that, but I have to do it. Oh my god, yes! She's right there! Floriana tortoises are extinct. So, how can it be that we have Floriana tortoises here if they are ex extinct? That's because Galapagos is just like Jurassic Park. <laughs> or what the scientists are trying to do is bring animals from extinction back. So what happened was that the scientists, you know, since now, ah, now the technology allows us to have gene tests and everything with the giant tortoises, they went to Wolf Volcano in the north of Isabella and started, um, you know, getting blood samples from all, all these tortoises there and find out that these tortoises, there were 90% genetic makeup of the tortoises in Floriana. So what we're doing now is doing, uh, we're, the, we took these tortoises and we're breeding them here. And after four generations, we can have a pure lineage from Floriana back. It's really interesting just learning all the Charles Darwin research, what they've done here. You know, the local people, not just scientists that were imported or migrated here, but just people who were locals that discover these things and you know use scientific research to help save these islands. It's really cool just to see it all. And it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of layers to the Galapagos Islands. You don't realize that on the outside you just think animals, but there's actually a lot going on to make sure these animals survive. It's cool. We just got done with walking through the Charles Darwin Research Center. So now we're just gonna walk into town to Puerto Ayora. excited to see local kids learning in school because I used to be a teacher in Japan and they were so much fun just teaching kids English and so it would be cool to see all these children right now learning so I'm excited. The school is called Tomás de Berlanga. It's named after the guy that discovered these islands. Been here for about 25 years. Okay, It was started as an initiative by some parents who were not happy with the alternatives, the public alternatives that they had, and they wanted to do something that felt much better for them. Hi, I'm Leslie Casquete. I, am, I, have, no, I am 15 years old. I am in 10th grade. Uh, okay, I will be your guide. Hi, Hi, my name is Romina. I am 16 years old. I'm 10th grade. Lead on. Okay. Okay, um, I think we can start with music class. So. We're at the school right now, and yeah, everyone's running around. There's a lot of kids, and they're all having a good time, it seems. Uh, second grade for seventh grade, uh, we uh, learned math, science, I think also history in English. And the other subject is 
In Spanish, and next when you go to eighth grade, you are you have all the other subjects only in Spanish. I love how they have the um, there's pathways all throughout the forest or the forestry, the jungle for the kids to play on and hang out. It's not just like all cut down trees and stuff for them to be able to see the kids easier, which is usually what they do that for. But yeah, they didn't cut all the trees down. So there's always little pathways throughout the trees where all the kids are like hanging out. It's really cool, I like that. Right now we're in a restaurant in the mountains of Santa Cruz Island and we're just eating some nice little chicken with some mashed potatoes, carrots and broccoli. It's a little different than what we've been eating so far, but this is simple, it's easy, love it. Really excited, let's eat. Okay, so we're entering the tortoise, the land of the tortoises. And, well actually no, first we're going to go into the lava tunnel. A lava to itself, it's created out of a lava flow and the surface solidifies faster than the inner core. Okay, so the inner core is overheated and it keeps going out by gravity and afterwards there's an empty space. And that will be the empty space at which we're walking through. But eventually down low by the end, the roof gets a little lower. Okay, because this one is a double decker lava tube. One flow. Solidified and I'm gonna fall on top of the first one, which is pretty unique, very special. We just got out of the lava tunnels. It wasn't that bad. Just, it's pretty cool though. We're gonna go see the tortoises right now. They're over here. Look. Yeah, so these, these little guys are born on the lowlands and they come up here only uh, uh, to mate. You know, once they grow to a certain size, they can uh, resist the change of temperature at night because they are ectothermic, so they need to stay warm. So they do that normally when they're past 10 years, so they start climbing. But the babies, you never see them up here because they're born down there in the lowlands mm. where it's warm. So as they grow, as they gain body mass, they start to climb higher. But this one is not able to breed yet. It'll need another 20, 25 years, 35 wow. years before they reach sexual maturity. And uh, after that, this is the paradise, man, because uh, here they find food, they find water. So if you happen to be a male and you make it all the way here, there's no reason to move ever again in your life. <laughs> That's the reason why they get so big, you know? Whereas the females, if you look at the females, they're tiny. They're about three times smaller than the males. Mm -hmm. because they have every year after they mate, they have to go back there where they were born to lay eggs and then come back. They can smell us very well, for sure. We're wondering what we smell so bad. This turtle's really huge. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the size in comparison to me. But he's really big. Did you get that? Yeah. Okay. So this is our dinner buffet. We have cheese right here in the front as well as some fruit and some bread to go with it. Everyone loves a little cheese and bread. And then on either side, we have our salads. We've got some ham, a little mixture of quinoa, black beans with some peppers chopped up on top, and then a mixture of vegetables. Baked local whole pez brujo, which is scorpion fish. This is a specialty of the night. I'm really excited about that because I love fish, so. Can't wait. We've got the pez brujo right here with some chimichurri sauce on top of it. I'm gonna take a little bite of it. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Face. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> remember that I told you in the Saturday that if you eat something from Galapagos for another 100 more years, that's for sure. And now you can swim in 100 more years again. <laughs> so we're going to go see some traditional 
Ecuadorian music and dancing right now. These rhythms are shared among uh, Peru, Bolivia, a little of Colombia and Ecuador as well.